Greetings everyone, Quantum Unicorn here. Welcome to my channel. This is a systematic step-by-step -step course that will help you master the essential skills of quantitative trading and financial analysis using the powerful programming language, Python. I'm excited to share my knowledge and insights with you as we delve into the dynamic field of stock trading modeling and financial analysis. I look forward to embarking on this journey with you and creating a vibrant community of like-minded individuals. Let's make the most of this opportunity to learn and grow together. Welcome aboard. In this video, we are going to continue learning more about pandas and specifically, we are going to be learning about the data frame and pandas index. So let's, let's look at what a data frame is, and then we will learn more about how we can select some specific portion of data. If you were following along with the last video, this is basically the same Jupyter notebook that I had before, except this is just added up a bit. We are importing pandas and matplotlib here, and then we are reading in our CSV file, FB, which is a historical data of stock prices of Facebook. Now it's meta. Now it's meta. <laughs> now, if you haven't been following along with the video so far, then I do have a link in the description section below that links to where you can download this data and follow along with this okay okay here i have fb dot head parenthesis this is a method we have discussed this in the last video this method prints out the first five rows of the data frame as you can see the data frame is made up of multiple rows and columns here basically Pandas data frame is a tabular structure of data. We also have this over here to the far left that don't have column names. Uh, this 0, 1, and 2, and 3, 4. And this is an index. Well, I have to be honest. There are quite a few tutorials and blog posts online about Pandas indexes. I have seen several and almost none of them make any sense. There seems to be a lot of confusion about pandas data frame indexes. So in this tutorial, I want to make it crystal clear. I will explain exactly what a pandas index is and how it works. To do this though, I really need to explain data frames. The pandas data frame is pretty straightforward. It is, it is a Python object that stores data in a row and column format. The columns typically correspond to a particular variable, and the rows typically represent a record. For example, if your data frame has sales data for a corporate sales team, you might have columns for things like name, region, sales, and expenses. In such a case, the rows themselves could represent information for a particular salesperson. When you create a data frame in Pandas, the data frame will automatically have certain properties. Specifically, each row and each column will have an integer location in the data frame. These integer locations for the rows and the columns start at zero. So the first column will have an integer location of zero, and the second column will have an integer location of one, and so on. The same numbering pattern applies to the rows. Well, actually, we can access the rows by the index. Pandas allows you to define a label for the rows, which we call an index. The terminology here can get a, a little bit confusing. However, commonly, people will call the integer location that I mentioned in the previous slide an index. To clarify, I will refer to the integer locations for the rows and the columns 
as the integer location. Having said that, it is a little confusing because of how pandas creates an index by default. If you don't explicitly define an index when you create your data frame, then by default, pandas will create an index for the data frame. This makes things a little more confusing because by default, the index is just the range of numbers starting at zero. However, we can also manually define an index, such as a group of labels for the rows, which I showed in the previous slide. Well, hopefully this clears things up a little bit, uh, but, if you, but if you are still confused, it's probably best to work with some examples. Here are some examples for you to play with. Uh, well, I think they are pretty straightforward. But if you have any questions or experience any technical difficulties, please feel free to leave a comment. Okay, now I will walk you through some examples of defining and working with a pandas data frame index. Before we actually work with the examples, we need to do a few prelim preliminary steps. Let's import pandas. Keep in mind that import pandas will only work if you already have pandas installed on your computer or computing system. If you don't have pandas installed on your machine, I recommend that you install the Anaconda Python distribution and then install pandas through the Anaconda navigator system. And then we need to read in our CSV file, FB, which is historic data of uh, stock prices of Facebook. And then a pandas data frame is created. Well, as you just saw in the previous slide, when we created our data frame, pandas created a default index. Here, we are going to redefine the index of the data frame. Specifically, we are going to use one of the existing columns of the data frame as a new index. To do this, we are going to use the pandas set index function. Put simply, the pandas set index function is a function that enables you to set one of the columns of data frame as the index. Here, we are going to set the date variable as the index. Notice that when we print out the data frame, the date column is now set off to the left side. That's because the date variable has now been set as the index. We can check this by retrieving the index. Here's the code, fb.index. Notice that when we print out the index, it now lists the elements of the date variable. This means that we can use the values of this new index to retrieve the rows of the data frame Let's do that in our next example. In this example, we are going to use the pandas lock method to retrieve data. Let me quickly explain what lock does. The lock method enables you to select rows by a defined index. So in the last example, we turned the date variable into the index for the FB data frame. By doing this, we will be able to select a row or slice of rows by using the specific date for that row. Let's take a look at an example so we can see it in action. Here, we are going to use the pandas lock method to select a single row of data from our data frame. So what happened here? We used the lock method to select a single row by the index value. In this particular case, we had set the date variable as the index for the FB data frame. That means that all the dates have become the index values that identify each row. The lock method enables us to use the index values to retrieve rows. 
That's what lock does. Let's take a closer look at the syntax lock. Lock is used to select or filter rows and columns by labels. When using lock to select rows, you need to provide row indices label. It also provides a way to select rows and columns between ranges, every alternate, etc. And the start is the name of the row and column label. Stop is the name of the last row or column label to take. And the step, step as a number of indices to advance after each extraction. So by default, the value of step is one. So you can skip typing in step value if the default value works for you. If you don't provide a start row column, then lock will select from the beginning. If you don't provide a stop, lock will select all rows or columns from the start label. If you provide both start and stop, lock will select all rows or columns in between. Hopefully this clears things up a little bit, but if you are still confused, please feel free to leave a comment. I will do my best to help you. And the pandas iLock. The pandas iLock is another property of data frame that is used to operate on column position and row indices. Now, we already know pandas data frame is a two-dimensional tabular data structure with labeled axes, columns, and rows. So by using iLock, you can select the single row and the column by index. The example demonstrates how to select a row by index. And in order to select a column by index, we can use the code below. And let's take a closer look at the syntax. As we discussed before, data frame iLock is an index based property to select rows and or columns in pandas. It, ex it accepts a single index, multiple indexes from the list, indexes by a range, and many more. So when you use iLock to select or filter data frame rows or columns, the, the start is the integer index of the row or column. The stop is the integer index of the last row or column when you wanted to stop the selection. And the step as the number of indices to advance after each extraction. Still, by default, the value of step is one. So you can skip typing in step value if the default value works for you. If you don't provide a start index, the iLock will select from the first row or column. If you don't provide stop, the iLock will select all rows or columns from the start index. And if you provide both the start and stop, then the iLock will select all rows or columns in between. Hopefully this clears things up, but if you are still conf confused, uh, please leave a comment. I will do my best to help you. And if you want to select multiple rows and columns, we can use integer index as a list to iLock attribute. Here is an example of how to select rows by index. And, and to access more than one row, we need to use double brackets and specify the indexes separated by commas. Here is an example. By using rows and columns by range, this example selects column between two indexes. We select the data between the first row and the fifth row from the third column to the fourth column. By doing so, we have retrieved a so-called slice of data from the data frame. Now, maybe you are thinking, which index tool should I use, lock or iLock? Well, it depends. 
if you know the exact integer locations of your rows and columns, then iLock is a good option. If you haven't set an index yet using set index, you can still use the lock method to identify columns by name, but you will have to use the integer locations to identify the rows. If you have set up an index, then the lock method becomes a much better option. Ultimately though, it depends on how your data are structured and what you are trying to do. I recommend that you learn and practice both the iLock method and the lock method so you understand what uh, when to use each one. Now, if you have, now, if you have been following along with the tutorial, you should have the date frame that we have been using. FB set up with the date variable as the index. Now, we are going to undo that operation. We are going to remove the index from the data frame and make the date variable back into an ordinary column. Here, we are going to remove our pandas data frame index using the reset, the reset underscore index parenthesis method. Okay, so let's run the code and then I will explain. Take a look specifically at the left hand side of the output. The name date is no longer set off to the side. After running reset index, the date variable has become an ordinary column in the data frame. Now, after running a reset index, the range of the integers starting at zero has returned to the left side of the data frame. The range of numbers uh, starting at zero is now the index again. In the most basic case, the syntax of reset index is fairly simple. We simply type the name of the data frame and then we use dot syntax to call the method. Essentially, we type the name of the data frame and then a dot and then reset index. If we do this, the reset index method will take the existing index or whatever it is and will turn the index into a column of the data frame. At the same time, it will reset the index back to the default numerical index starting at zero. Now, we can confirm this by retrieving the index. As you can see, the index of Facebook is now a range index object starting at zero. Okay, that's all for today. I hope you feel like you have got a good introduction to the data frame and how to navigate through some of your data now. Congratulations on finishing this tutorial. My goal is to bring you closer to the financial success that you have always aspired for. I invite you to join me on this journey by subscribing to my channel and clicking the bell icon on to receive the latest updates. If you have any inquiries or concerns, feel free to reach out and leave a comment. In our next video, we will explore more on manipulating data frame. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to connecting with you soon. Goodbye.